screen. There's a link below as well. And I think that's all the main announcements I have. So I'll do the official cut for YouTube. Hi everyone, I'm Timothy Von Rieden, better known as Von Art Online, and welcome to this weekly Wednesday live stream. This stream is something I like to do every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time. It could be a follow-along stream, it could be a fun type of stream. Usually I'm drawing uh, something, <laughs> and today is no different. Today actually is a little weird though because it is kind of promoting my Draw This In Your Style challenge that I'm currently running on Instagram, and it is to draw my little dirt kid in your style. And more importantly, to draw any flower, any flora, any succulent, whatever it is that is growing out of the dirt kid's head, and uh, put why. And this has been a really fun challenge for me to see. I posted my first uh, compilation last night, and I'm gonna keep doing that throughout July. So if you wanna submit your own, you have pretty much all of this month to do so. And today, I'm gonna be drawing this sunflower dirt kit. I did a, a warm up sketch beforehand just because uh, I wanted to make sure I have like a final product by the end of this. <laughs> Sometimes I, I end up ranting about nothing and I, I don't draw as much. So I wanted to have some uh, leeway before I went into it. And also if you have any comments or questions along the stream, please put add von art so that I can see it easily between, I'm gonna put the chat right there and it doesn't have to be related to what we're working on. It could be an art question. It could be a business art question, a drawing question, whatever it is, I am here. Or if you really want to get me going, ask me a thing about films. I am a big movie nerd, so I love that. And also, I'm just free to talk to you if you are bored or maybe you need a friend to draw with. So I am here for that today. Okay, so hi, everyone. I know I missed some of you. Uh, hello, hello, hello. And let's go ahead and do this. So I'm doing this little dirt kid girl, or like a female version. I know gender is kind of irrelevant in 2020, but I thought it'd be cute to give one of my dirt kids kind of like a pulled back ponytail. So I guess male, female, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I like the idea of her just kind of running through the grass. It has a giant sunflower from her head. Because to me, sunflowers just represent like pure joy, just a big, joy. <laughs> so I want to draw this uh, turk kid running through a field of uh, grass. There's some butterflies by her. And that is what I'm going to be working on today. So if you're going to be working alongside me, you're drawing your own dirt kid, I'm going to be sharing yours at the end of this stream. So basically, if you're drawing the dirt kid, post it in the Discord uh, channel that's called, I think it's stream follow along. And at the end of this stream, so in two hours roughly, I will go ahead and put yours on the big screen and we will share what you got. And that way, uh, I can kind of see, obviously if you're working on a dirt kid, but also other people can see your lovely creation as well. Now, just like uh, Felix said in the, the chat, I am also gonna be working pretty much primarily with a Bic mechanical pencil. Uh, this isn't some like point to prove that you know, you can do your art in a mechanical pencil. I just sincerely like working with a mechanical pencil from time to time. There's something about the, um, well, obviously the fact that you never have to sharpen it, but I'm, I'm really conscious of the tip and I rarely work with the point of the mechanical pencil. I often work with like the slanted flat side and that's how I uh, get that texture graininess from the paper is still present while I'm working. And the trick is to really just let the pencil glide over the paper, and that way it creates those pockets of a white where the, the paper texture is more grooved in. And I, I like the look of the paper texture being seen. I know it's more of like a preference. If you really don't want the paper to be seen at all, like you don't want any grooves, then you just push a little harder into the paper and eliminate all of those uh, fine lines. So the Dirt Kid body usually has this really harsh gradient from black to pure white on the body. So I'm gonna recreate that here as well. So normally if I find myself doing too much value transitioning, 
I'll just take my kneaded eraser and I will lift it up. Is it raining outside? Oh no, I'm just hearing things again. Oh, hello, hello everyone. <laughs> oh, Renato, it's Oxy Leon. Oh, I got you there. Hello, everyone. Um, hey, Kyle's here. Timothy, missed you dearly, friend. I'm working alongside you, but not drawing. Probably won't be in here for too long. Well, it's good to at least hear from you, Kyle. Uh, Bartek, I have this issue. I don't know if it's better to draw your original characters or just drawing fan arts um, help. Uh, you can draw whatever you want. Like I said, I am here to be someone to just draw alongside or work alongside, in Kyle's case, if you just need, I don't know, background noise or accompanying voice while you work. I know sometimes when I went to school in college, uh, it was just nice to have a room full of people talking. Oftentimes, if you can believe it, I wasn't the one talking at all. I would just kind of sit in my corner and listen, and I got a lot of work done. It creates this like weird background noise presence where you feel like you're a part of the conversation without having to deplete a lot of energy contributing to it, if that makes sense. <laughs> and I feel that now that I've gotten older, I, I think there's this level of expectation I think because once people get to know me, they expect me to do a lot of the talking or to keep the conversation going, which I don't mind doing. But sometimes I do miss the days of just being able to sit in the corner and be kind of the fly on the wall that uh, gets to just absorb whatever conversation is currently happening. So now mm, some of you might be wondering, why am I working so light if I'm going to make this so dark? So to build up my values, I like to work in layers. And I do this a lot of the times when I'm working on a person of color, if I'm working on skin tone. I don't like to go too dark too quickly because then it's really hard to lift it if you make a mistake with an eraser. So instead, I kind of layer it on, uh, similar to like Photoshop layers, you, you kind of do like passes. And that way, I can create a really consistent value pass throughout of it or throughout it without it uh, having areas that are like either too dark or um, especially with pencil if you really push in the paper too hard it can create this like sm really smooth graphite reflection area and I definitely don't want that I want there to be some texture still so to really build it up I, I just kind of have to go slowly and this is something that I've kind of learned over the years on working with pencils there's little like tips and tricks that you learn along the way and they're not always um, applicable Ap applicable it's a weird word to say applicable uh, but they come in handy for times like this uh, Eric back with some tea I currently or I usually drink tea on these streams but throughout the summer and spring it's so hot here that uh, it looks like I'm just drinking pond water. Like I literally went into the pond and like scooped up a fresh cup. But it's actually, um, I make like green smoothies in the morning and then when I finish it, I just fill it up with water. So oftentimes if there's extra chia seeds or spinach and kale leaves, it kind of creates this like murky pond. It, it doesn't look that appealing, but I promise it actually is pretty good. And it's supposed to be good from you from what I've heard. Uh, Alina says, thanks for making this Draw Us in Your Style Challenge. It was a lot of fun. Moved from that to working on another piece during this that is inspired by your work. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you, Elena, for um, doing it. I, I wanted, because, I mean, I have been uh, told for a while I should make my own Draw Us in Your Style, but I didn't want to just draw, like, a pretty portrait and then have a bunch of other people draw the same pretty portrait. So I, I tried to think of something that would be... Um, uh, versatile in the way that people can not only interpret it but then add their own flair add their own story behind it so with these dirt kids you know depending on what flora they pick coming out of the head I feel like there's a story behind that and then um, what they're doing and uh, act there's been so many good stories behind their dirt kids a lot of them are kind of sad I'm I'm kind of surprised by how many have kind of attached this uh, Kind of melancholic meaning in a in a beautiful way 
but a lot of the way that people attach their relationships with flowers are often sad ones, which I'm kind of learning, where I think my my whole life, I think I've always attached meaning in like more of a happy way. But I guess that makes sense. Like if your grandmother had a very specific flower that was her favorite, and then she passes away, it would be hard not to look at that flower and not think and reminisce about uh, her. And I guess for me, it was never flowers, but it was um, birds, weirdly enough. And there's this big thing in my family with cardinals. So that's why there's one actually behind me right here. And uh, there's a lot of cardinal art throughout the house. And I'm not even that like crazy about cardinals, but um, because of the association with my family, I like to have them around as uh, little reminders. So now when I get into tighter areas like the edging of the hair, I'll use that side of the mechanical pencil where it's sharper and that's how I carve out that edge. And I, I tr I'm trying to get the face done first because usually if you can make a good face in a drawing, the rest of it will be kind of secondary. Uh, kind of a, a weird thing to learn, but I think since I've been doing Instagram for so long, if you have a really good face, it almost doesn't matter what the rest of the drawing looks like. And I hate that that's true, but I never try that, or I never have that be like my scapegoat. So even if the if I really think I nailed the face, I wanna make sure that the whole body, the drapery, the clothes, the background, whatever it is that I'm adding to it is also great. Because I don't wanna just be one of those artists that rely on a pretty face. Not that there's anything wrong with it, I just, I don't wanna be uh, limited to just that aspect of my work. And that's why I like doing things like this that are a little more silly, you know? I, I don't wanna be just that that guy that draws pretty um, people. <laughs> so why not draw some pretty little dirt children to mix it up? Now, usually when I draw uh, almost anything, I will do it in certain detail passes. So right now, this would probably be the second pass, where the initial line art is more or less the first pass. Now, I don't try to constrain myself to any specific way of drawing, but uh, in this case, since I, I knew it was gonna be a small endeavor, it was a very specific piece, uh, I, I then have the line art, the really sketchy line art phase, be like stage one, where normally when I do my art, I just kinda let the piece grow organically, where I'll just start with a face and just kinda let it grow out from there, and then whatever happens, happens. And for me, that's like the joy of doing art is trusting your mind and your hand to work in cohesion to create something new and exciting. Uh, it doesn't always pan out. And I think that's also the beauty of art. There's like a slight risk factor. I think that's what always attracts me to doing uh, more art. But when it does turn out, I just it's so exciting. And I guess that's part of the reason why I, I just know that this is definitely the career for me. I, I'm very thankful and grateful that I kind of found what my passion was early on in life so that in my adult life I can make more of a career of it and still enjoy what I'm doing. There we go. All right, now for the sunflower, I try to get some reference photos of my own sunflower in my backyard uh, that me and Josh have been working on. I have this little patch that's been dedicated to sunflowers, but the rabbits have been ruthless this year to my sunflowers. I had to double fence it, as crazy as that sounds. And still only about four of them survived. I think I planted eight. Uh, it seems like a squirrel then jumped the fence at one point and like just snipped it one and half. I was like, why? What was the point, squirrel? Like, why Why do you do me dirty like this? And then, uh, what happened to another one? Oh, and then another one, it just rained really hard and the stalk like bent and it bent just enough where now it's like growing uh, like six inches to the side. So you have like the stem and then it, it hangs down and then it grows straight six inches right. It's very bizarre. I've had a really weird run with sunflowers this year. 
we've had a lot of good runs with like watermelon and things like that but man sunflowers this is not their year i can just say that um sarah says i like the combination of the drawing and pin on your shirt on brand for the draw in your style you bet uh the dirt kids kind of become one of my unofficial mascots i guess and i'm totally okay with that so not only do i have pins but i have business cards that i were was giving out at one point where uh, they're they're business cards but they're also plantable seed paper so it would have a dirt kit on it with some information and then i would give it to people and then you could plant it in the dirt and it would grow into wildflowers uh, i saw this idea i think my sister may have told me about it and i was like that i need to do that like that's very much on brand with uh what i like and how I try to treat my business in more of like a green manner. It's very difficult though. Uh, even today, I think uh, my my partner Josh, he's on the phone with uh, a company that does like compostable packaging for sleeves and for the prints that we do. Because we, like three years ago, I ordered a, a ton, like a ton of giant sleeves but now that we're running low, I wanted to find an alternative and we found one, but apparently they don't often make them. So it's a lot of phone calls, it's a lot of back and forth and uh, hopefully we're gonna get that soon and we'll be like almost 100% plastic free. We're like very close, we're really, really, really close. So hopefully that will be the next step then. Uh, Free Sealy says, do you have any advice for the Dirt Kids hair? What material is it exactly? I like the little waves. I find it hard to catch the flow and the shape. Uh, I think for the hair, I just always saw it as, you know, when dirt gets a little wet, it turns into this kind of clay mud. Uh, I kind of originally saw it as that, um, but I always draw it as a very light value. So I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be. <laughs> I know that's kind of a poor answer, but I like the, the, the lumpiness of it. And to me, it just kind of represents like this organic matter that kind of sits upon their head. Uh, so in terms of like finding shape for it, I would keep it pretty simple, pretty lumpy, and then just have a couple areas where it's more uh, defined within the shape itself. And you don't have to go super overboard with it. Honestly, even a couple little, you know, like ringlets will do the job. Yeah. Okay, so now for the ponytail, speaking of like the weird clumpy dirt shape, I'm gonna try to keep this pretty simple here. See, I think when you add too many like little shapes, it becomes a bit distracting. So I might even have to simplify some of this ponytail here. There we go. Yeah, I'll come back to that. <laughs> so let me make sure you guys can see the sunflower all right. I have to move this up. Well, you know what? I'll make, make this smaller. Uh, there we go. So the sunflower has pretty typical leaves, nothing that extraordinarily different than what you're probably used to in leaves. But I wanted the flower to be tilted in one direction, <laughs> also known as a great band, and then have a lot of the showing of like the side of the flower because you get some pretty interesting overlapping shapes from the petals. And I, I wanna definitely implore that here. And whenever you need to mix it up with shapes of leaves, rather than always making them like perfectly facing the camera, I try to bend them or have them overlap. And then I'll usually have like one facing the camera for sure. So in this case, this leaf would be the one facing the camera. And then this one is the one that's kind of bent. And then this one, we might see the underside of the leaf. 
I think because the more uh, complexity you add within the leaves, the more interesting and honestly, the more realistic the, the flower result kind of becomes. Uh, because if you have all the leaves facing the camera, it's not really true to life because more than likely you're going to have a bunch of leaves that are not going to be perfectly facing the camera. So some, some little advice if you're someone that's going to want to be drawing, you know, a bit of flora. This leaf I might even put like behind the sunflower. I don't know what I was originally planning, but I think I'm going to have it. Yeah, I don't hate that. Sometimes you gotta explore it. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks good. Okay, so now for the flower, I actually do have some references pulled up. Because my sunflowers are not in full bloom, I wasn't able to take reference photos of my own flowers, but I always recommend doing it if you can. So instead, I had to find some random um, collages on the internet. <laughs> and they'll, these, these will do well. So now for the sunflower itself, you, if you can see my preliminary lines, I basically just did the generic like loop, 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 loop. So for this one, I'm gonna kind of take my time and go around the flower and show how irregular sunflowers can actually be. A little bit more of realism to it. Um, Sarah says, my sister is the one who takes care of plants and the garden. I usually kill them. I have no idea how the two ones in my bedroom are still alive. Um, I used to have more of a problem with keeping plants alive, I think because I didn't know uh, their like watering needs. And I learned very quickly, you can definitely overwater plants. And I think that was my biggest problem. And I kept doing it, being like, ah, they're, why do they keep dying? I'm watering them enough. Turns out I was watering them too much. So <laughs> uh, I think gardening or anything plant related and like keeping them alive is just, a, you learn from experience. And then uh, honestly, a Google search can be your best friend. go so the the real hard part here is the petals that are facing the camera or that are kind of turned toward the camera because they've got to be foreshortened just a little bit and the shape of them is going to be really weird for the viewer but it'll make sense when you have all of them together Let's see here. Sorry, sometimes when I, I concentrate, I get a little quiet. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I feel like I've drawn um, so many sunflowers, I kind of know the general shape and kind of irregularity to the petals. longer though. Um, Felt says, is the flower to body ratio around one to one or does it depend? Is the body to flower ratio? Uh, honestly, it doesn't really matter uh, because in this case the sunflower should be way taller and the dirt kid would probably not be able to move around because the sunflower would probably be way too heavy. So I think there has got to be a little bit of your own take on it. Um, I think just to fit the paper and the, the size of the stream, I chose to make the, the stem much smaller and kind of compact. But I'm not trying to limit anyone on what they want to do with it. Uh, it is yours to freely move about and determine what it looks like. So 
I guess for composition's sake, yeah, I think having them a bit smaller, the flowers, I mean, and having it be almost one-to-one. -one. But like I said, your decision. Eric says, choose a succulent. Uh, I love cactuses, um, but I also equally love aloe. I have a, I had a big thing with uh, succulents back in the day. Um, I guess I can explain it. So I used to think that my friends were like plants. And the reason for that is because some plants require a lot of water and a lot of care. And in my mind, those were the friends that, you know, are more needy. And that doesn't mean they're bad, but usually they need, you know, your ear to talk to or they just need things more. And then you have other friends like, uh, well, I'm not going to list my own friends' names, but there's ones that come to mind specifically that are more like cactuses or succulents because you water them maybe once a week and they're fine. You barely have to do anything with them. They're, they're very self-sufficient and um, they, they kind of just do their thing. They're not considered the most beautiful plants, but they're the ones that I cherish the most because uh, I'm also pretty busy and I love, live a pretty busy lifestyle. Or at least at that time, I was really living a busy lifestyle and I needed friends in my life that could be more like succulents and cactuses. <laughs> And then the the pretty ones I always joked uh, are the ones that you know like flowers or um, the ones that really need to be watered every single day. I I couldn't be friends with those people for too long because uh, I I couldn't keep up with their demands. I I wasn't capable of giving them what they needed on a day to day basis. So I I have a really soft spot for succulents. Um, even though it's a kind of a weird association, I think my whole life I associate things, um, and that's how I've been able to navigate through life, is everything kind of has a metaphor or an analogy, and that's because I am a visual learner. Like, um, when I would study in high school, I would memorize the pages, or like the pictures that were on the pages of the textbook, and I could remember vocabulary or definitions based on where they were in the book. So when people say they're a visual learner, they might not actually know what that means. Uh, but for me, it literally is I learn from visuals, and that's my association. I can tell you every drawing I've ever done, I can tell you where I was uh, because I, I have that locked in my mind. But if you were to tell me what the street names were around the house that I live in, no clue. Like, I'm the worst for that. Uh, good luck. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Anyways, why am I talking about this? <laughs> oh yeah, succulents. Uh, let's see here. Sarah says, for entering the challenge, we must T you post them on Instagram or can I just post on Discord or both or neither? Uh, I would recommend posting them on Instagram. It's the easiest for me to screenshot, reshare, and um, I would also share them on Discord. I've seen some lovely ones posted. We have our own little challenge for it right now. And there's some good, good little dirt kids already. Uh, from Lauren D. Hey, Timmy, it's Timmy si or Kitty's sister. Oh, hello, hello. Can I commission you for some art pieces I would add to my sewing cabinet I'm painting? I love your designs and want you to paint, put something on the doors. Uh, possibly. I mean, I'm not the best at painting, but I guess if you just DM me on Etsy, and that's how we can make it happen. Uh, Kyle says, wow, I use a plant metaphor for my friends too, specifically with my relationship for watering them. Also, Tim, what plant am I? Kyle, you would definitely be, you're not really a cactus because you're not prickly um, in personality. I guess you're more of a succulent. Like I think, uh, I think myself, I'm, uh, no, I'm not really a cactus either. I want to be a cactus, but I'm just not, I'm not. <laughs> I just, I think because cactuses really just do their own thing and they're just so unbothered by everything else and they don't want to have interaction. But I guess, yeah, I'm more of a succulent. I would consider you more of a succulent. And don't get me wrong. I, I now, now that I've kind of balanced my life a bit, I've been able to have more flower friends, if you want to call them that. Um, I know when Sean Price lived here, he would always we would always joke together that he was more of a flower plant, or he was definitely not like a cactus or succulent. And that's okay, because I, I'm learning how to have those type of friends as well. Um, 
I just think the ones that are the easiest for me to have like long term are definitely more of the, the cactuses and the succulents. But I've kind of learned now how to water those flower fronts. <laughs> Um, Jonathan says, I've been plowing through illustrations of late for an upcoming book. This has been such a great break to enjoy something different. As always, big love from Scotland. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, big love from Wisconsin back at you. Well, I'm glad this was a nice little break for you. I just feel like these are so easy to draw. I mean, anyone could probably knock this out in two hours. If I've seen some people just do quick sketches and they're able to whip it out so quickly. I feel like because I have a slight tendency to want everything to have that rendered flair to it, I tend to take just a little longer. I mean, even this little sunflower girl, I think, uh, could be done way faster. But since I, I am so determined to render every edge, it just takes a little longer. Okay, so that is kind of my second pass. So now I'm gonna go on my third pass. So this is when I'm gonna start really edging things out and adding another layer of value and hopefully um, get a bit more of the, the values rendered in. So it looks more three-dimensional. And normally I never work really dark, which is something I'm trying to work on. So the dirt kids are interesting because I'm not really putting them in a space that has lighting or uh, a specific light source or three-point lighting system. Instead, I'm just kind of relying purely on contrast to create the illusion of shape and form. I mean, even the way I'm going to render the leaves and the petals, the shape is very realistic, but the way I'm rendering it with light is very unrealistic. And I think that's kind of how I've developed my style over the years it's this kind of mixture of my love for things looking three-dimensional and have that realism undercoat but to be rendered in a way that's more visually pleasing in my opinion and more focused on contrast and uh, kind of where I want the values to be <laughs> Sean, <laughs> Sean's here <laughs> I'm a small flower a very small needy flower but I'm beautiful damn it <laughs> uh, yes you are Sean yes you are I've also kind of come to learn that I think flower people tend to like cactus and succulent people and cactus and succulent people like flowering friends not too many uh, but I think that's kind of what I've seen over the years now mind you this metaphor is not even real and everything I'm talking about is more uh, perceptive but <laughs> that's kind of my opinion on it Eric says I was lucky enough to have a picture of a succulent that had flowered so I'm trying a bit with the design oh there you go I I feel like I rarely think of succulents with flowers but you're right normally they they could sprout like a little flower on the top. Especially, I think it would be really fun to do uh, a cute cactus dirt kid. Like if I did a really short kind of plumpy one and then just have like this really small cactus on its head with like an even flower or a smaller flower on the top. I think that's just a really cute design. And that's kind of the fun of these is they, they really don't take that much time and effort to make. And maybe that's why I've kind of enjoyed this challenge so far because I feel like it's not that big of an ask for people to draw a little dirt kid and honestly I've seen ones that are so creative there was ones with like water lilies and the dirt kid was kind of sitting underwater and then its sprout was um, it hit the surface and that's where the lily pad was I was like well that's a really clever way to do that Now this dirt kid's gonna have his their mouth open. Now the dots that I put above and below the eye, I try not to actually um, edge them out. I try to have it be like the soft edge and then everything else has more of a hard edge. So it has that contrast then.
I keep the eyes as white as possible. Once again, playing on that contrast. Uh, Lauren says, I mean you would draw the design and I would transfer it to the cabinet to paint. Oh, that'd probably be way easier. Yeah. Sean, radiant even. <laughs> yeah, Sean, you are a radiant plant. Oh, well, thank you, Zabi must die for subscribing. I hope you make peace with the Zavi character that apparently must die. So if I try to rush adding values too quickly, you can see how we get kind of that streaky line effect. So that to me is just haste. Uh, if you really want a clean, consistent value transition or a full pass, you gotta kind of go slower. Now I've seen a lot of good artists like Alan Williams that just seem to master holding the pencil sideways and create a really quick, dark, bold gradient, but I am not there yet. I am still on my way. And for now, I'll just keep my small circle technique and keep trying to hit that eventually. But you can kind of see how it's coming together a bit more. So I, I layer on those darker values. I mean, my true goal is to have this finished um, by the end of the stream. I feel like the sunflower might catch me off guard, but I'm really hoping I can get this done uh, in the next, how much time do I have? Hour 15? Okay. So I definitely want to show off if any of you are working on your dirt kid during the stream. I want to share yours and give them a moment to shine in the sun. Sometimes it gets to a point where I'll just continue rendering up. Like if I feel like the pass is good enough for this pass, I'll just keep moving um, up and then eventually I'll start back down. It's kind of like a, a printer, but doing it in passes. Uh, it's a very weird way of rendering. I don't always do it like this, but I try not to hyper render one area and then move to the next and hyper render that area. It's kind of what I used to do, but I found that I wasn't being as time effective or efficient. So I think by moving around the piece in levels, I'm able to move quicker because then I'm not so particular about one spot. I'm trying to have it consistently level up uh, throughout working on it. Make sure you guys can see it. Okay. So now for the stem, this is another fun way to add a little gradient. I'll have it be darker near where it hits the flower base and kind of roll into a softer value into the hair. Creates that nice illusion there. Um, oh, and be sure for everyone, if you put at Von Art, that because I'm when I'm looking at the chat, that's I'm immediately going to where it's highlighted. Uh, just in case you have questions. So I see Velt, you had our whips of Dirt Kid welcome because I'm 100% sure I'm not going to make it in an hour or should we just post finished piece later on? Yeah, you can share your work in progresses. I think for a stream like this, I'm not being like, it has to be 100% finished or else you are not shared on the stream. Uh, no, I, I'm very welcome to post even thumbnails or like quick sketches. So yeah, please share it at the end. I mean, if you want to keep working on it after, that's totally acceptable, obviously. Elena says, I just got to say, my favorite part of this piece is that the Dirt Kid looks like they are just running to praise the sun. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the, the impression I wanted to give, so that's great. I love sunflowers. I, I, I really do just, when I look at them, I just see joy. And I don't know if it's like the older I get or... Uh, I'm starting to perceive things a little differently now that I'm older. I don't know if it's just because, it, I don't know. I actually don't know why. But uh, 
I, I get really strong reactions or stronger reactions when I look at uh, certain things, especially in nature, where if I see a peony, I'm like filled with this like soft pink joy. It's different than when looking at a sunflower and it's kind of hard to describe, but uh, if feelings were like a color when you feel something, like when I think of a campfire uh, at night, I think of like a warm red ember glow and that's like the feeling I get from it. Uh, and then when I look at a sunflower, it's just like this bold yellow uh, warmth and it's just very joyous. So yeah, it's kind of great because then uh, movies, I feel like I'm, I'm really concentrated on their art direction, like on their uh, color palettes or in, um, a better example would be like when Halloween comes around, if, if I set up the room with Josh where it is very like orange and purple and it's full of blinking candy corn lights and there's witch uh, crap everywhere, <laughs> uh, the feeling walking into that room like immediately fills me with um, like glee. It's like this childhood uh, excitement that I get, especially Halloween being like my all time favorite season. Uh, just walking into a room that has that presence, you feel it. Anyways, enough about feelings. <laughs> Aruba says, after you've drawn a whole bunch of dirt kids, would you ever do a mini art book of them? Because I would so buy that. Yeah, I would definitely do that. What I really wanted to do, uh, we'll probably have to do it next year because obviously with COVID and everything that's happened with the world, it's been very weird this year. But I would love to make a book of gardening where... Um, me and Josh kind of grow certain things and I would draw the stages of like the seed into the sprout into you know like a weekend two weeks in and where it would look like and then each one I'd have like a dirt kid that represented whatever that plant was whether it's a bean or corn and uh, that would kind of be the book it's obviously very early to even say that this is something I'm committing myself to but it was an idea that I had that I really liked that I'm like you know what I'm gonna put that on the back, 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 back burner, and who knows? One day, maybe I'll actually put it on the front cooker. What am I doing? I'm supposed to be working on the flower. <laughs> I get distracted very easily when I'm working live on uh, streams. Eric says, "Look what you did to my peonies. They are marigolds. Movie reference that became a meme." Uh, I actually don't know the movie reference. I wish I did. I'm usually really good at movie references. You're going to have to share with me what that means. So now if we're doing the leaves, I I don't want to just render them normally. I try to look at where I think adding contrast would add kind of a fun flair to it. And then I push the values either darker or I just leave them untouched. It all kind of just depends. Now, I will also normally not just fully render one leaf like I just talked about because who knows if I want to edit or make a leaf lighter or maybe even just remove a leaf altogether. So I'll usually kind of give myself hints of what I think I'll want to do. And then I'll like pull back, look at it and adjust from there. Oh, kind of weird, but I've been watching Beastmaster on Netflix. I'm like weirdly into it. I'm not even that big of a sports person, but I really like competition shows, especially anything where it showcases and displays people that are very passionate about anything. I'm kind of into it. I watched the whole competition show on glass blowing that's on Netflix. I think it's called like Blown Away or something. Um, and I like binged it in like a week. I was so into it. So I'm like, I'm just waiting for a concept art one. I feel like it's gonna happen eventually. Uh, I'm just like waiting for it. Or I'd love to be a judge or a, even a participant, something. I would just, I would love to be involved with it if possible. So doing the petals, I'm gonna have to pick a couple that will be a tad darker. Maybe the ones that are more in the foreground. Because to add just a subtle contrast can be really difficult with a flower. I want them to kind of be individualistic to a point, 
but still work together as a grouping. Sometimes that can be a little difficult. So I, I like to work really light for this stage and then push and pull uh, values after. Now I feel like, like I said, since I've drawn flowers many times before, I kind of have a rough idea of how I like my flowers to look, but you never know. You don't want to get too cocky or too arrogant going into anything, even if it's something you're comfortable drawing. Uh, Aruba says, that book idea would be absolutely amazing. I would also buy that one, but maybe a small book that would just be a compilation of the Dirt Kid prints, so could be a not so back, back, back burner. <laughs> Uh, yeah, possibly. Uh, well, I mean, we'll see how many I draw for this month because I keep wanting to reshare people. I did not expect this many people to draw them. I think there's already over 500, and I was not expecting that. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I wanted to add little butterflies on the side. So you can see my standard, this is a butterfly, like clip art. <laughs> and then I have like the actual reference of a butterfly. I'm like, well... A little wrong but you know you tried it's another good lesson of reference always helps if you're not using reference oftentimes you're just hurting your yourself I'm gonna turn this can you guys see this okay Actually, speaking of butterflies, I saw this really cute uh, meme online where it was like this caterpillar and a butterfly talking to one another. And the butterfly was giving the caterpillar advice. And they were like, uh, at the end, they were like, you know, in a few or someday you'll be just as beautiful as me and you'll be majestic and be able to go wherever you want, blah, blah. And then the caterpillar goes like, well, implicit word here. Uh, I'm already beautiful and it was like that's cute <laughs> like, and the butterfly was like shook <laughs> that was really funny sometimes I have a little too much time on my hands where I I'll just go on TikTok or Instagram and get lost in the search but I think my Instagram and TikTok know me well enough now where they share really funny stuff or things that I find funny rather than like art focused things or things that are probably more current in the news uh, so I get a lot of things like that uh, Sean says, just stop by and say hello. Gotta keep, get back to writing. I'll talk to you soon, my dude. Keep on keeping on. Bye, Sean. Thanks for stopping by. Keep on working on that book. You got one week till your launch. Elena says, or Elena. Haha, I now have finally found another one who is addicted to Netflix game shows. I binge watch most of them as they appear on Netflix. Blown Away has been one of my favorites. Uh, it's been really interesting because as I personally am wanting to get more into learning stained glass and uh, that kind of stuff, it was really interesting to see how glass is blown and treated and worked with and how super fragile and how, how things break all the time, even with professionals. So yeah. Um, Eric says, it's a film clip from a movie called The Gay Deceivers. I have not seen that one. I've never even heard of that one, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Where where is this butterfly? I wanted one on this side. Maybe I do like the clip art butterflies better. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I might go back on that. I don't know yet. We'll finish the dirt kid first and then I'll worry about the butterflies. The lele foom. If 
Okay, so now I'm going to enter another pass. So usually the more passes I do, the more it becomes pretty rendered out. And you'll kind of start to really see the details start to come together. And you may be wondering, well, why don't you just work on one area at a time? I think the, the main part of it is because I like to see the whole drawing. And I mean, it is a composition. It's not like a full edge to edge composition but it still has a composition of values and uh, contrast control. So I like to see how I'm building them up and just kind of confirming with myself that yes, this is where I want the values, uh, the contrast look good here, and then go in and really like darken and shade in them. go and for some reason I always find it way easier to add value on top of value that's already pretty established there's like a weird comfort there and this is where I probably should become a little more confident working with powdered graphite and I promise I will experiment with it and I'll probably do a few live streams with it but I'm definitely not comfortable with it yet enough to be like here's how to work with powdered graphite and it's very messy. And if any time there's an area where there's either like a bump or a weird dark area, I'll just use my neat eraser and I won't even tap it that hard into the paper, but just enough to lift the, the part that looked a little off. And if you haven't already been able to tell from me talking enough on the stream, I like to use the word a little or just a bit or like, I, I don't know why I use adjustment words where they're very subtle, but apparently those are the words I like to use. Um, Fem says, so if bees were to come to the flowers of the dirt kids, would it tickle them? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. I, one of my drawings I want to do is I really want to do a dirt kid riding a bee. I think it would be really cute to have uh, a smaller dirt kid riding like one of the big bumbles is like a steed almost. Now we're starting to get to the value that I kind of want it to be. <laughs> Very cute. If ever a time I want to feel like I really want to smooth it out, I'll use my finger and just slightly brush it, but I won't do it too much because you don't want to add too many oils from your fingers into the paper. I can make it really hard to erase, actually near impossible really. Uh, Aruba says, your smoothie drink looks too pretty to be pond water. It looks more like a pastel paintbrush water. Also props for pronouncing my name perfectly. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, I don't know. I feel like you're giving me a lot of credit. Like, look at it from the top view. It definitely looks a little rough, a little rough. Uh, Eric says, the movie is from 1969, and the premise is that two straight men pretend to be gay to avoid deployment in the army. It's noted to be surprisingly non-stereotypical for the time. Yeah, doesn't surprise me. Belt says, where's Josh? Is he doing okay? He's actually downstairs doing the orders. Uh, it's a very busy day, uh, but I, I want to bring him on. I, I told him if he was feeling it, he could join me today, even though it's not like a heavy timed session one. I feel like that's where I really need help, where normally, I mean, I can do live streams on my own in terms of like difficulty, but I, I do enjoy Josh being by my side. 
but he was really wanting to get the orders done, so that is where he is today. Um, Fem says, would the B wear a saddle then? Uh, possibly, yeah. Right? Wouldn't that be great? And I, I thought of that one um, when I was doing my card deck. One of the jokers that was like a standard was a joker riding a bee for some reason. It was like a, a child. It was a boy that was dressed up like a jester. And he was riding a giant bee. And I thought that was so strange. I mean, I loved it. Don't get me wrong. But I thought it was very strange. So doing a dirt kid would be pretty cute. Imagine if that was my joker card. It was like a dirt kid riding a giant bee. Be like if I ever did another playing card deck that was dirt kid themed that would be the Joker okay now normally when I draw these little dirt kids running or jumping or whatever I kind of do this triple jump splash impression under them I mean, it used to be my thing I would do for all my draw Tober drawings, but kind of just bled into everything I draw now. Hmm. Okay. So I think I can work on the sunflower, and then I'll decide what to do about the butterflies. I'm not, not crazy about them right now. We'll see. We'll see. So now, switching to the leaves, I will actually switch to my smaller mechanical pencil. This is a Orens 0.2 mechanical pencil. I normally save this for like fine rendering and detailing, but for some reason, doing uh, flora... Let me make sure you guys can see this all right. Oh, you know what? It's delayed by a bit. Hold on. <laughs> Let me refresh that. There we go. There we go. So I, I just find a weird comfort using the mechanical pencil for detailing the leaves. I think it's because I can get really intricate pushes and pulls very quickly if I need it. Or sometimes with the larger mechanical pencil, I don't feel as confident in getting some of those edges. There we go. And then to clean up the edge of the little stems here, going to use my Orens, or sorry, my Mono Zero eraser with the circle tip. It's my favorite eraser for edging and detailing that way. I highly recommend it. Um, Fem says, all I can imagine now is the dirt kid on the bee leading a horde of other bees to go forth and make sure all the flowers get the attention of the bees. <laughs> I mean, that's really cute, right? I like that. Actually, that might be like the story I should create behind the, when I whenever I draw it. Sarah says, I don't know if it's me or the camera or your drawing aren't synced because I saw your smoothing while you were very busy racing. <laughs> Yeah, no, sometimes it's delayed, like right now. See how there's a little bit? Well, no, actually, now it's spot on. Uh, sometimes I get the third hand effect where I'll be drawing on screen, but then I'll be like using my hands to talk. And that's where the joke from me doing these uh, streams is that I have a third hand that apparently does all my drawing. <laughs> uh, Eric says, I kind of want clowns and jesters to return to be more benevol benevolent characters. It kind of became too much of a horror trope, so I kind of want to rewind. 
Yeah, I, I think that would be cool. Well, you know what they say with anything, uh, when anything leans too far in one direction, the opposite becomes that much more appealing and cool. So even with film, like there's been so many superhero movies and that type of film that now indie movies or things that are different from it feel diff, uh, exciting in a way. Where I think a lot of, like a good example would be, even though they're the same type of movie, they're both superhero movies technically, um, you have Endgame, which I mean a lot of people liked, but it was definitely kind of more of the same. And then you had Joker, which, yeah, it's controversial, but it was different, and a lot of people called it refreshing in the superhero genre. Uh, but I think even, even further from even just staying within the genre, I think you have uh, movies that really push it. Or actually, music's a great example, where, you know, for a while, pop was really, really hot, especially in, like, the late 2000s, early teens. And now... It's kind of like a lo-fi, chill, slash, um, like very melancholic. Uh, I guess it's kind of melancholic. Melon, I can't even say it. Uh, you have like the Billie Eilish and the Noah Cyrus and um, a lot of those young rappers that have this very like sad sound behind their music. And I think right now that seems to be really trendy. So the next thing, if I had to predict, uh, would be probably very happy uh, living simply type life uh, music would probably be pretty popular. But I think then all of a sudden you have like Lizzo and Harry Styles' new album come out where it's very much like happy, floaty, and bouncy. And I think that's why it's so cool. I love people. I love how this kind of stuff works because it'll never stay just one thing, which is exciting because if you're not really into the current trend, just know that it will evolve. And there will be some things that will always stay consistent. Like you'll always have the, the stereotypes of like, I mean, Disney kind of pushes out very similar movies. Um, I, I doubt Marvel would stray too far from their path from what they're doing. But then that encourages other filmmakers and other brands to try doing something similar or completely different in the opposite direction. So for me, it's exciting. I'm a big film nerd that I, I love seeing as many different types of movies being made so you get a variety. So surround yourself with variety is I guess what I'm trying to say with that. <laughs> um, let's see here. Zavi says, are you using a reference for this? Uh, kind of. I, I have like a few pictures of sunflowers. I have a couple of sunflowers in my backyard so I try to take some references of that. But the flower itself, since my sunflowers don't have a flower yet, I did have to pull some references. And I'm kind of making up some of the petals, honestly, as I'm going through. But for the most part, I think when drawing real life subject matter, you should always use reference. Always. <laughs> It'll always tend to look better. Uh, but don't follow it so closely. Because remember, even if you're doing a study or if you're trying to make something look like a flower you still have to bring your own style to it usually and uh, if your style is very soft and curvy and has more of an animated look to it i don't think drawing a realistic sunflower on top of like a very um, your style character in a scene where they're both in there uh, would be cohesive so you do kind of have to you know, take into account how you enjoy drawing things and uh, kind of bring it into that that spectrum. Aaron says, have you tried the Koinor eraser pencil? I found they are quite handy for the lead detailed erasing when sharpened with an X-Acto blade. I have not. I mean, I feel like I've never had to get super edged out. Like if I ever need it, I'll take my mono eraser, I'll kind of do circles with it, go in different directions to create as flat of a tip as I can here. And then when I'm edging out, I'll just tilt it so that I'm using the edge, that corner where it's, you know, more of a triangle and I'll use that to edge it out. And it works really well. So to be honest, I've never even heard of the brand that you recommended, but I, I really should look into it. Because I'm never opposed to trying new um, equipment for my my work. 
I'm in kind of a try not to spend a lot of money mode right now though. So I might have to wait until I get out of this this realm. I think once my books and my card decks come in, I'll feel a little better about spending money again. Hmm. Again, yeah, deciding where the gradients go, it's always kind of reliant on how I render things around it. So like I said, I'll sometimes push the value darker after I kind of commit to a certain look. It's like right now, I feel pretty committed to where the values are on the leaves. So now I can kind of go in and make them darker. And sometimes as a little trick, I'll pull in like my 2H pencil. It's like a really soft, soft, soft value. And areas that I know are gonna be pure white, to make them look even brighter, I'll push the area around it to be this kind of soft gray, like very, like 10% gray, honestly. And it makes the areas that are white even whiter. It's all an illusion, perception of the visuals in the mind. <laughs> so I love art. So then even on the base of the head here, I can push the background to be just a little darker, and then it'll make that hair and that sprout where it's coming out of the head just appear brighter. And these are like little tips and tricks you kind of learn from drawing all the time. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I've weirdly amassed and gathered all these tricks and tips that I kind of subconsciously, usually unconsciously, do. But then I think because streaming has taught me to vocalize my process, I become way more aware of what I'm actually doing and why I'm doing it. Uh, Aruba says, I remember you started watching the Versailles series when you were working on your cards. Did you ever finish it? What did you think of it? I did not finish it yet. Uh, so I mean, so far I kind of liked it. I know it gets a kind of a bad rep online because when I Googled it, yeah, people were not a fan, it seemed. But then I feel like you have a lot of people that are more diehards for it. And I feel like I got to finish it before I have a solid opinion yet. Hmm. All right, where am I at? Okay, I got 45 minutes. I'm good. See, I should just always come on the stream with like a preliminary sketch because I feel so much more confident going into it. I can talk more. I can converse with you guys. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna try to do some detailing on the petals. This is probably what will take me a good 15 minutes. So I, I wanna kinda push through this without making it feel rushed. So like I said, I wanna share your guys' uh, Dirt Kids or if you're just doing quick sketches, whatever it is. I'll probably stop the stream here in like or I won't stop it. I'll stop me drawing on the stream in like 30 minutes, and then I'll I'll share your guys's afterwards. Contrast is gonna be the biggest thing. Um, Eric says, not to go all capitalistic on you, but I feel like someone who would want to do a book for houseplants might actually, or might be interested in hiring you. It would certainly be a good aesthetic for novices. Yeah, I mean, that would be, honestly, it would be a lot of work. <laughs> and I'm trying to stray away from doing commissions for a little bit because I think it would be, I have another, well, I have a couple of projects that I'm trying to work on at the same time. And I'm learning that throwing commissions in the mix usually distracts my my other work. So I'm learning that I, I really shouldn't be taking on too many commissions. And 
Um, there's like certain people, like friends and family, I think kind of have that priority. But then uh, CG Cookie, whenever they want me to do stuff for them. Actually, I can show you, I did two more birds for this beer company I'm working with because it's ran by my former boss, or one of my firm, former bosses. So after all, birds. So here is the one I did last night. Uh, this, this is for the micro beer company called Sand Hills Brewing. And then I had to do this little chipper. So doing more like close to realism studies like this aren't that difficult for me because you're literally just copying a picture for the most part. Uh, and I, I don't hate doing them, but I wouldn't want to do them all the time. I like doing more fun, creative projects like this or more like big, creative, uh, deeper meaning ones. So, I don't know, find that balance, all that good stuff, yada, yada. Uh, Julie says, how much time do we have left? So we have about, you have about 25 minutes. So keep working, keep working. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a finished product if you want to just share a work in progress. That is totally fine. I can share that on the stream. And I feel like I cheated because I had the, the preliminary sketch before the stream even started. So technically I'm more like already at two hours into this. Now the real tricky part is I'm trying to make it look like the, the middle of the circle is lighter, like a actual sunflower. Or I guess they're kind of dark. Well, depends on the flower, I guess. Uh, but I feel like that is a staple in giving the impression of a sunflower. So I gotta make sure I have that. Hey, Sean. Hey, Tim. I'm so happy to finally get a chance to get you on during the stream. Your dirt kid looks great. Thank you, Sean. I hope things are going well for you over there. Sean is another one of the artists that we always see at conventions and we hang out with. She is a wonderful, also another traditional artist that I would definitely recommend checking out. All right, this circle is rough. It's looking a little rough. Gotta fix it up. I just have to go like very dark in some areas. Ugh, see, I gotta be a little careful with this. I don't want it to look rudimentary because I'm trying to rush it here. So sometimes you really just gotta dig in your heels and do those smaller details. Oh, I watched Hercules last night. <laughs> I, I swear, that movie has some of the best Disney original songs. I can almost recite most of them. I wouldn't say by heart, but I could probably do like 60 to 75% of the song by memory. I just love the, such a good beat, good rhythm to it. I can usually watch any movie that I've seen before pretty easily while working in the background. Like I was working on The Hawk while working on Hercules. And um, I, I find it really soothing to have some kind of a background noise. I prefer working with movies in the background. Sometimes I feel bad because I turn on a lot of movies that I haven't seen, so I can't fully pay attention to them, which I know is kind of blasphemy to um, someone that should enjoy a film for all they have to offer and give them your full attention but there's so much film and movies out there that it'd be impossible for me to try to do an art career and just watch all of them so I tend to do both 
But if there's a movie that I'm 10 minutes in and I can already tell that I'm loving it, I'll usually put that one on save. Put that one on the watch list. And then when I have a good night where I can just solely focus on it, that's when I'll turn on the movie. But movies that I've already seen, like Hercules, bada bing, bada boom. Throw it on, get a hawk done. Best of both worlds. Uh, Sarah says, I love Hercules a lot. It's a very fun movie. I love, I have the Latino version memorized. I would love to hear some of the Disney songs in different languages. Do they, I'm assuming, yeah, they have to. They sing in the different language as well. Because I, I used to Google some of um, different songs that I really liked in French because I think French is a very beautiful sounding language. And I would just listen to like popular songs in French. And then that led to me finding French pop, which I actually really like. So you never know where your YouTube music search exploration can take you. <laughs> You know what, I might make the middle of this very light. Hmm. Uh, girl, Sean, we're, you're too sweet. We're over here making bean mosaics on paper plates and blowing bubbles so I can watch. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, recently, well, not recent. So kind of a tangent, but uh, when I turned 29, I don't know, was it when I turned 30? No, I think it was when I turned 30, me and my best friend Kat decided that we wanted to go to Chuck E. Cheese and then go to Skateland as like our getting old party. And Chuck E. Cheese was great, but if you can imagine a bunch of 30 year olds coming to Chuck E. Cheese trying to actually win prizes, uh, we were dominating to say the least. So we walked out with a bubble gun, but uh, last weekend we started using it. We found out it's not like a bubble gun. It's did every, any of you guys have those Thumbelina princess spinner things that you like wind them up and then you let go or something and they just like fly straight up well this bubble gum was bubble gun bubble gum uh, was similar to that where you rev it up and then it's electric so then it uh, shoots this thing it looks like a mini uh, what are those called those little spy camera flyer things anyways it shoots straight up and thousands of bubbles come out of it and it is a blast one of the best things i've ever won from a arcade in my life i take it back that is the best thing i've ever won at an arcade <laughs> okay i think because i have about 15 minutes left I think I'm gonna work on the butterflies or how much time do I have left? Ah, I got like 10 minutes. Or wait. No, like 19 minutes. Okay. That means you guys have 19 minutes before I start sharing yours. And if you're already done, you can just share them on the Discord community below. There's a channel called uh, Stream Follow Along. Just share it on there. Or if you wanna just put it directly in the Dirt Kit channel, I'll check there too. Can I get these butterflies done? I think I might simplify them again. I was trying to be all edgy with this sharper looking butterfly, but I think I'm gonna keep it curvy. So I feel like the mood of this drawing is very joyful. I think I'm gonna 
accentuate that feeling with softer curves. I feel like sometimes I simplify my butterflies so much. But they kind of get the point across, or at least I think they get the point across. But they don't steal any of the detail attention away from like the main focus. Maybe I'll render out the left butterfly, and if I'm really not liking it, I'll change it up, but we'll see. Actually, I wonder if I keep them more light. This is, you're watching me literally have some of these internal arguments I have with myself. I'm thinking if I render it too realistic, I feel like it might take away. But if I keep it more simplistic, I don't know if I'm entering that cartoony zone where it doesn't look real at all. So then it's distracting because then why is the flower looking so hyper realistic? For sure, I'm going to give this butterfly some outer glow, some reverse contrast glow. I think I like that. Hmm. I think I like that. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm sticking with it. My bad, my bad. I was so distracted for a second. Hey Martin, how you doing? Ah, now the other butterfly. I thought about it because with the live streams, I might do like a dirt kid a week on a stream, just because I have so many that I have to reshare. I think I create a lot. Because so I thought it would be a fun thing if I created a bunch of my own as a way to like share other people's. So maybe expect that for the rest of July. I know for sure though, next Saturday, I have another interview scheduled. And the interviews have become actually my favorite thing to do on YouTube so far. And uh, it was like a month ago I was able to do, actually no, I didn't do any in June. In May though, I had the honor of doing uh, Miles and then before that Pete and Villarte and Babs Webb. And they're all on my YouTube right now. But the next one is Victor Mori, who works on, uh, her works at Riot Games. He used to be a illustrator for the splash art but now he's working on the animated series that they're working on, and I'm very excited to interview him. So if you guys have questions about getting a job in the industry or what it's like being in the industry, especially at such a big company like Riot, uh, he is definitely a good one to ask questions to, and we'll be doing that live in two weeks.
There we go. Okay. I think now I have a little less than 15 minutes left. I'm going to go through and just kind of render out areas that could just use a bit of a touch up. And especially with the darker value here, I can really go in and maybe even do like pointillism on some of the areas that just have like a little gap of the paper texture scene that I don't really want. I want it to be as consistent and matte of a black as possible. Or not like pure black, but this dark gray. So I'll probably share the next dirt kid tomorrow night because I already have a post planned for tonight. So if you want to see the next round of reshares of this little dirt kid challenge, I will post it tomorrow night. And then she, or this dirt kid, will be the poster child for that group. The only weird thing is if you decide to go darker on one area, you have to go darker on the whole thing. So this can be time consuming, but it's worth it. Oh boy, uh, here we go. Jonathan says, flippin' heck, man, a way to turn 30 in November. And yes, I do remember those mad spinning Barbie things with three sisters that was always dodging flying Barbies. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Sounds about right. Uh, Sarah says, your arcade story reminded me how much I miss going to arcades and also that I'm turning 33 at the end of the month. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I feel amazing being 30. 30 is like a great year, and I'm hoping it leads into a great uh, deck. Decade. Is that right? Decade? Yeah, decade. I just feel like when you're 30, you're usually a little more financially secure on some level. Um, not always, and I don't want to make that general assumption, but usually you have a good set of friends that you've grown up with that you can trust and rely on. Uh, if you have a partner, you're probably pretty solid in that department too, because you might have been dating for a few years at this point. You know, I don't hate 30s. 20s were a lot of fun, 20s were chaotic. The first half of 20s is more like, oh, woe is me, the world, blah, blah, blah. But then uh, once you hit like 25, you kind of find out who your true self is, because apparently that's when your brain stops developing and that's when your true persona kind of finally is baked and you come out of the oven and you either like what you got or you don't like it. Uh, but normally I would say most people like what who they are by the time they hit uh, 25. Not always the case and sometimes it takes a few more years or whatever to um, you know learn to like who you are and all that all that good stuff. But for those of you who are in your 20s that are worried about turning 30, I can tell you right now it's amazing. So far. And I have some friends that are in their late 20s, early 30s, and they've all kind of said the same thing. It's a good time. Uh, Fem says, ooh, I actually got to visit, or I actually got the chance to visit Rye in February. Seems like a lifetime ago. Yeah, no kidding, right? I can't even, the idea of like thinking about February seems so far away because that was the time I did my last convention uh, with Josh and I can barely remember it now <laughs> and I had so many lined up for the spring that yeah it does feel like a lifetime ago Zavi says what do you do to keep your drawings from smudging I know it might seem really silly of me to answer this way but I just don't put my hand over where I've already drawn and if I ever do I, I'm not that hard of a presser, or I'm not very heavy-handed, I should say. So a lot of the times, the, the graphite won't smudge. But I'll, really, it's because I'm not using very dark of pencils. 
If I was using a 2B or anything darker, yeah, there'd probably be a lot more smudging within this piece. But since I usually tend to work with 2Hs or um, HBs, and I think because I've worked with pencils so heavily the past seven years that I'm very aware of where my hand placement is and how to turn the paper. Doing a live stream is a little more challenging because I obviously can't turn the paper. Um, I mean, I could physically, but it would be an inconvenience for you guys watching. So I, I've kind of learned how to rotate my arm and hand around in weird places to get the drawing to look good, uh, or at least to shade it the way I want it to be shaded. So just be very present of where your hand placement is, and honestly, work light to dark, and if you can, work left to right if you're right-handed. And yeah, hopefully that helps. Sarah Bear says, 30 plus are just so much fun. I agree. I I don't know. I, I thought it was me like kind of sad to leave my twenties because you know that's that's like the fun years and uh twenties were great for a number of reasons, especially like my mid twenties on. It was just a lot of fun. My my late twenties were great. I would never exchange it for anything. Uh teenage years were kind of like I was the soft spoken quiet kid, so I was okay to get out of the teen years. Um, but 20s, especially late 20s, were really fun. But 30s so far, besides the world being in the weird state that it's in, um, personally, it's been pretty good. What's my time at? Okay, I got seven minutes. Final edging everywhere. Um, Tim tip. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of my Tim tip. Welcome to my Tim talk, and today I'll be talking about how to not smudge with paper. Uh, my first slide just says don't, and that is the end of my Tim tip talk. Thank you for coming. some edging on this butterfly and I might even call this one done a little earlier so I can start looking at your guys's or no I guess I, I told you guys your time so <laughs> I'm not trying to rush you guys if you're actually working on this Trying to think of what else I've watched recently. Oh, me and Josh watched Toy Story 4. Uh, rendered and graphically, it's phenomenal. There are like some beautiful uh, points in the movie where I was just amazed at how they were able to achieve the level of not only realism, but of uh, the, the like small details. There was like a arcade merry-go-round type uh, siding that they were standing on top of and the way that they painted it they actually made it look like when they put the gold on a lot of the filigree around a merry gold it was a little rushed so the gold would even then spill over on some of the areas that were meant to be white it was just handled so well and little little things like that i think go a long way for someone like me who kind of looks for those fun detail spots um, I wasn't crazy about the story, and honestly, I, I kind of disliked a lot of the message, honestly, behind it. So I'm not going to say I would recommend it on a story base, but definitely on a technical level, I thought it was gorgeous. What else did we watch? Oh, I showed Josh um, The Killing of a Sacred Deer. I don't necessarily recommend it, but I really like it. But it's definitely like a weird, creepy, uncomfortable movie. This is the best way to describe it. I feel like, was there something else? Oh, Gretel and Hansel. Maybe I talked about this last week. I can't remember. But that one was definitely worth watching. Visually, great. Uh, story is whatever, but visually, it's worth it just for that, honestly. And I started watching Never Ending Story because I've never seen it before. And... Um, I realized I couldn't draw while watching it, so I gotta pick a night where I can just watch it and give it like my full attention because it seems to be 
exactly the type of 80s fantasy that I'm really into. Like, I love Legend. I love uh, Willow and uh, The Labyrinth. So I, I'm actually really excited to watch Never Ending Story. Yeah, I think I'm I think I'm done with this. <laughs> I could probably go around and do one more pass after the stream's over, just to make sure it's fully detailed, but sometimes it looks good a little rougher in areas. Which is a very hard thing for me to admit. And I think even even after saying that I look at it, I'm like, well, I'll probably clean up some of the edges. <laughs> I think I'm done with mine. So here's my little sunflower dirt kid. Like I said, I'll probably go in and just edge out a few more areas, but I will post her tomorrow and do another batch of reshares. So I'll, I'll share another nine artists and I can look forward to that. So if you guys could start posting, if you drew alongside me today, let me get Discord here. Oh wow, you guys were on it. You guys were so quick. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. The first one with the bumblebees are so cute. Oh. Like literally, those are some of the cutest little bumblebees I've seen. Okay, let me, I'm gonna switch screens and then that way you can actually see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna move Discord on this screen. Full screen. There we go. Okay, so let's see if this works. There we go. Okay. So, and I mean, thank you guys for those of you who drew alongside me. I know it's not a true follow along stream where we're working together uh, or at the same time looking at a subject matter and studying it as like a study. So, I thank you guys for uh, participating in this kind of weirder. Uh, one today. So here is Eve's. I think this one is great. These were the bees that I was talking about. Uh, I think you did an excellent job. I think the gradient is really well done. You worked really well with like a mid-tone gray and it it really looks great. It's like a ghost. It looks like it belongs in like a Final Fantasy 14 concept art book. And the bees are just great. I think they're cute. I don't know what flower you're going for. I don't know if this is like a also a sunflower or a daffodil or a thistle. I'm very curious to see what the, the final turns out to be. So this is very cutie. I like it a lot. Here's my other one. I will post the finalized ones this week here on Instagram. <laughs> oh, actually, this is kind of a cute shape. It has like the onion bulb kind of shape to it where it's like round and then it comes to a point. I actually like that you made the feet like, like roots. I should probably do that to mine, honestly. Because that was the original idea, is that's why their legs are lighter, because they're supposed to be like roots. But I like that you gave some actual like lines coming off. I feel like I might, um, I might adapt that to my own, if you don't mind, because I think that's a really good idea. Uh, Felix, okay, only HP mechanical pencil and no proper eraser, so I know the values could be pushed more. I chose a succulent because it's the first houseplant that didn't die on me and my boyfriend. Gave it to me as a gift, which felt really special to me. <laughs> oh, oh, actually, I love this. <laughs> like the plant's like overcoming him. It's like a giant uh, party fiesta hat of some kind, like an explosion of uh, headwear. Oh, it's great. That The proportions look really good. I've actually never seen the succulent with the flower that kind of comes out the top. So that is, that's new for me. I've never seen that before. 
But yeah, that is definitely a challenge taking on a succulent in an hour and a half because that's a lot of shading out form and shape really quickly. So I give you a lot of credit on that. But I feel like I've seen a lot of your follow along uh, results and I I have a lot of faith in you. You're just like a, a solid artist when it comes to timing. Um, Eric's. Oh, you know what this reminds me of? Actually, first glance, I thought of uh, Digimon. I don't know. If, it's not Lilymon. The one that she evolves into that was never in the original show, I'm kind of showing my age here talking about it, uh, was Rosemon. And anytime I see like a character with uh, thorns wrapped around them and then kind of like a head shaped flower uh, up here, it always reminds me of Rosemon. But this is really cute. I feel like this is a warrior of some kind for like a some kind of floral kingdom. And I like the top of it. It kind of reminds me of Vileplume or uh, it's like a mix of Gloom and Vileplume. That's one I probably should do. That'd be cute if I did like a Oddish Dirt Kid, a Gloom Dirt Kid, and then a Vileplume Dirt Kid. Be like a quick like fan art cross into a draw list in your style. So this is very cute. I like his expression too. He looks weirdly approachable even though he has all the these kind of like aggressive looking uh, nature paraphernalia around him. Uh, do, do, do. So Maline says, sorry for the bad photo and I hope it's okay. I post this even if it's not a dirt kit, just did the base sketch. Oh, this is Alina. Oh, that's kind of nice. I mean, honestly, anything that's like overly fantasy, I'm kind of into. So I want to see you continue to render this more. And definitely stick with the big flowing locks. Anra. <laughs> oh, this is a fun interpretation. See, I feel like you actually study a lot of plants for nature life in general because the dragonflies and the flowers look very, very articulate for being um, as time limited as we were. So very good job on that. Yeah, I like that. Oh, oh my gosh, fam. Started this before your do this in your style, but I thought it was a perfect time to put it back up. Definitely not finished yet, but getting there. Oh, fam, this looks so cute. <laughs> that is the little dirt kid. The OG. Yeah, you did the, the leaves. You did perfectly. Those look so smooth. That looks like clay. Oh, I can't wait to see this one finished. That is, that is wonderful. And lastly, hexadecimal, here's my dirt kids, did red currants because I have a lovely bush of them in my backyard that both me and my cat love to go near, and a little bellflower friend for them. Wow, did you do all this in the hour and a half? <laughs> oh, this is great. This is something that I'm learning to do more, and honestly, it's difficult for me to have a very clear narrative within an image that isn't like a metaphor or an analogy or represented did of something like this where it's very much interacting and there's a story element already there that then you have to like pick up on the clues within the image to pick up what the story is. So I, I would say I'm, I feel comfortable doing like metaphorical art, but I wanna do more very narrative driven art. So this is great. Oh, never mind, we got a couple more. Uh, Elpa, here I go. This time I've managed to finish it. I was lost with the part when you were talking about age stuff. It made me laugh a lot. I'm still 17 years old there. I think I could push the dark part a little bit further. Uh, oh, this is wonderful. Oh, this is so nice. It's, it almost looks like it's raining or or the dirt kid just wanted to use it as like a festive hat or a fashion statement. Uh, this is great. Or is the flower growing out of the head? And it's just, maybe I'm reading it wrong, but I think it looks really cute if it's the idea of like he grabbed this flower and is like wearing it. Uh, it almost looks like a, if there was such a thing as like a floral mage, a flora mage, and instead of like a black mage or a red mage, this is a flora mage. This is really cute. Eddie, there's still lots of work to do, but I couldn't make it in the time frame. Oh. Oh, it's the victory bell plant. I never I never can remember what those are called. I just I always remember them from Pokemon. I, I tell you, I have so many references that always go back to Digimon or Pokemon or things that I, I really associated with as a kid. 
especially visually. Um, so forever, that plant to me is going to be Victory Bell. <laughs> but I'm very excited to see this one finished. This one's cute. Okay. I think that's all the ones we have for today. So thank you so much for coming to this live stream. Like I said, I do these every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time. Let me switch back here. And generally, I do follow-alongs on Wednesday with my partner Josh, who joins me. Uh, but this one's going to be probably a little weird uh, because June we took a month off because of what movement was happening and I didn't want to be a distraction. So I think next week will be either something kind of weird again or it'll be a follow-along. Uh, I haven't planned it yet, but so stay tuned. And like I said, if you ever just want to come to these and draw alongside them, but it doesn't have to be what we're working on specifically, it could just be because you want someone there in the room talking with you or having a conversation, I'm definitely down for that as well. But if you want to keep the conversation going until next Wednesday, you can join our Discord below. I do check that every day, and uh, especially for my Patreon backers, that's where I post all of my in-progress stuff. So even with my two birds, you can see how I drew them from the very initial sketch to the final render. Uh, and that's basically my Patreon backers get an inside look at how I create my drawings because I take pictures along the way that are exclusive to Patreon. Okay, and I think that's all I got. Oh yeah, and the one last reminder that for all of my Patreon backers that are watching, you will receive this lovely pin probably the first week of August, so stay tuned for that. Okay, that's all I got for today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Wednesday, or if it's already really late where you're from, I hope you have a great Thursday. <laughs> but get some sleep. It's probably really late for some of you. All right, take care, everyone, and until next time, bye-bye.